فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم وخصنا وخصنا بافضل الاديان وسنه الغراء والقران ذا الشيخ سيز وخصنا وخصنا من وات وخصنا من الله سبحانه وتعالى يونيكلي He uniquely favored us. وخصنا. He uniquely favored us. بأفضل الأديان with the greatest of religion. والسنة الغراء والقرآن. وخصنا. He uniquely favored us. Mean, meaning معشرة. Al-Ummah Al-Muhammadiyah. He's referring to the unique favoring here is for the, the nation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This Ummah. He favored us over the other nations. He faddalana ala sa'il al-Umam. And this is, a, this is the meaning of takhsis. In other words, takhsis is what, brothers? Ithbatul hukmi lil madhkur wa nafyu amma adah. Wasn't that what we said? It is that we are affirming something of a ruling for a particular thing and we're negating it from everything else. So it is ithbat, ithbatul hukmi. It is to affirm the ruling or it's to affirm something for either a particular person, a particular group or a particular, it doesn't matter. But affirming something for someone or something and it's to negate it from everybody else. So it is ithbatul hukmi fil madhkuri ama lil madhkuri wa nafyu amma adah and it's to negate it from everything from everything else. So what he's saying is that Allah uniquely favored this nation only. And he hasn't favored huh, any other nation with what? With the greatest of religion which is this religion. And it is, this is exactly what Allah said in the Quran which is Kuntum, you are khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best of nations. So we're the best of nations that has been brought out. We're the greatest of nations. Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 110. So we specifically been said, Kuntum khayra ummatin. And I've already elaborated on this once before and I'm going to say it again, which is that the word khayr, it is taken from the form of akhyar, which is af'al, which is a superlative, right? And, a, and the hamza was dropped because of the excessive usage of the word khayr, akhyar. So, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lina. Allah favored us with what? بِأَفْضَلِ الْأَدْيَانِ The greatest of religion. Greatest is also what, my brothers? Maybe أَخْيَرْ can be... Uh, yeah, نعم. بِأَفْضَلِ الْأَدْيَانِ means what? The greatest of what? Religions, which is a superlative. بأفضل is a what? A jar and a majroor. We have a harfu jar which is ba and we have afdal which is the isim majroor. What are they connected to? What, are, what is the بأفضل this harfu jar and the isim majroor? What is it attached to? What is it connected to? Meaning the greatest religion of what? It is connected to the verb, the word that we've just mentioned before which is khassa. نعم. Because the word khassa it is necessary for it to be attached to it. Are you with me, brothers? The reason why is because if you say Allah specifically, uniquely, if you say Allah uniquely what? You have to connect it to something. Allah uniquely what? So you have to attach it to the, the, the ism, the jar and the majroor, which is bi afdalin adyani. He favored us. Uh, sorry, he uh, uniquely gave us this. So somebody's going to say to you, what is it that he uniquely gave to us? So it would be what? Be afdal lil adyani, the best of religions. So that is what it's, what it's connected to. Afdal is, is a mudaf, and adyan is mudafun ilayhi. 
Allah favored us brothers with what? He favored us and he specifically gave us the greatest of religion. What religion? Deenul Islam, the religion of Islam. As the Sheikh said, Al Adyani. The Afdal al Adyani, the best of religions. What religion is the best is he referring to? From those? The religion of Islam. And you know, brothers, you're all aware of the term Islam has a general usage and it has a specific usage. Here he's referring to the specific usage of the word Islam because the previous religions are also called Islam. But here he means the Islam which is specific and it's the, the, our Islam. Our Islam. The Islam that our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent out with. Adiyani is a jam' it's a plural. And it's jam'u taksir. And it is the plural of deed. And in the Arabic language, linguistically, the word deen means ata'at wal jaza. It means obedience. And it also means encompass. Uh, it means, sorry, uh, recompense. Sah? As for the technical usage of the word, it means. It is what the Prophet came out with. That which Allah legislated. It is that which the Prophet came with. By way of legislation from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And the way to see this religion, it is through the Kitab or the, the Sunnah. Those are the two sources in which our religion comes from. Where we take that legislation from. It is through the Kitab and the Sunnah. That is what, that is, what is meant by... That is what is meant by a dinu religion. Now here, brothers, there's an ishkal. Here there is a an issue. It needs to be solved, which is if we say be afdalil adiyani, and we took the opinion that it is a superlative, or even if you make it a comparative, it doesn't matter. You're going to mean that there is a there is going to be the other religions, such as Christianity and Judaism, are religions of fadl, virtue. So question is that, is afdal ala babiha or laysat ala babiha? In other words, does afdal do what it should do? Or is it something else in this context? And does it have a different meaning? We can take both opinions. And they don't have any problems. If we take it as a superlative, and we leave it at its, at, at its original form, and leave it to do its job, then it won't have a problem with what we're trying to say as well. And I hope you guys understand the ishkal here right now. It's important that you do. Because if we say, afdal, you with me? For instance, let me show you an example. If I say, Abu Bakr, uh, Abu Bakr, it's taller than Nasruddin. This does not negate and does not go against the fact that Nasruddin is tall. Rather, it proves that Nasruddin is tall. It actually indicates from that that he is tall. Why? Because it is ignorant and it is wrong to even compare two people who are not compatible for one another. For you to even compare him to, if you're so tall, then you would have not been compared to him. The fact that they chose to compare you to Nasruddin is an indication to show that Nasruddin is tall, and so are, and you're, but, but the difference here is that you're much taller. You are much uh, taller. So if we compare religions, and we say that religion of Islam is better, then that means that Christianity and Judaism are both good as well. But it's just that Islam is better. We can't take that approach and say, yes, that's what's meant by it. But the Christianity and the Judaism that is being referred to is before it was tampered with. It is before what? Before it was tampered with. Even now, we will say, it is good in the parts that are true. The parts that are haqq. It is good. Whether it be Christianity, whether it be just 
whatever that's in their religion, that is haq, in other words, it is in accordance to our religion, that our religion affirmed, are you with me? Then that no doubt is what? It's good. And also that which was before they tampered with is also what? It is also good. We could also take the second approach, which is that we say, laysat ala babiha, that it's not its normal day to day. It's, it's not, it just means that Islam is a good religion and is no comparative nor a superlative. We can take those two approaches. But it's best to leave the, the, the word to do its job. صح? And that we don't take it from its work. That is what? That is what's better. <coughs> so we leave it like as it is. Be afdalil adiyani, the best of religions. So the best over all other religions, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Judaism, Islam is the best of religion. And it's the seal of all religions. It sealed it. Be afdalil adiyani. Wa sunnati. Sunnah means what? Sunnah linguistically means, it means a tariqah, a path. It means a path. But the meaning that is meant here is not the linguistic usage. It is the technical usage, which is what? That is, مَا أُضِيفَ إِلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مِنْ قَوْلٍ أَوْ فِعْلٍ أَوْ تَقْرِيرٍ It is anything that is attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whether that be a speech or an action or even a consent so it is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's actions it is the Prophet Sallallahu speech and everything in which he consented to that was done in his presence Alayhi Salatu Wasallam that is what's meant by Wasunnah that is the meaning and the usage of the author here so it doesn't mean the Sheikh does not mean the usage and the istilah of the usuliyin. The usuliyin, they say, they say that the sunnah is what? Wherever the religion has legislated in a forceful manner and you deserve to be, you don't deserve to be punished for leaving it. Sorry, it is, sorry, the wajib is what? Sorry, the wajib is that which the sharia has requested from you in a forceful manner and if you do leave it, you do deserve to be punished. Whereas the wa- sunnah is is opposite to that, which is the Sharia has not requested from you to do it in a forceful manner. Rather, it has requested you to do it in a recommended manner. You see? And, and if you do leave it off and don't do it, then what you do miss off is a reward you could have gained, but you won't get punished for it. Whereas wajib, it's something that it's obligatory. You have to do. So the usuliyin, they mean sunnah, something different to what the author is trying to say here. You with me? The sunnah here, here actually, the sunnah here that the sheikh is using, it encompasses the recommended, which is, uh, that which is an obligatory, and also the wajib itself. Sunnah here, that's what it means. Both. Because it is more general. And it is exactly the hadith of Irbad ibn Sari, radiallahu ta'ala, uh, anhu. Which is narrated in, uh, narrated by Ashabu Sunan, except the Nasa'i. They all narrated it. Abu Dawood narrated it, Tirmidhi narrated it, Ibn Majah narrated it, and Nasa'i did not narrate it. That the Prophet Sallallahu said in that long hadith, Alaykum bi sunnati, upon you is my sunnah, wa sunnati al khulafai al rashidin al mahdiyin, abdu alayha bin nawajid, wa iyakum, wa muhtatati al umur. So in that hadith, the Prophet said, Upon you is my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa. So upon you is my sunnah means my way, my speech, my actions, everything I consented to. So it's general this time. Okay. The sheikh then goes, wa sunnati, wa sunnati What does the word gharra mean? First of all, gharra is a wasfun. It is a description. A description for what? The sunnah. So what does it mean? What it means is, is bihal bayad. It means the white. The sunnah is white. The word gharra, the word gharra, 
is the white that is on the face of the horse. It is the white that is on the face of the horse. And the author, he took it from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu which he said, There's a riwayah that says, I have come with you this religion, white and pure. Not just white, but it's pure. Naqiyya means pure. From any filth, from any tainting, from any tampering, it has come white and pure. And of course, over time, it got tampered with, it got changed, things were added to it, and things were subtracted from it. But the Prophet said, What? When I came to you, it was what? It was white. So the Sunnah is what? In another riwayah, the Prophet said, Taraktukum alal mahajjatil bayda layluha kanahariha la yazu'a anha illa halik. What is it? I have left you on a white, white place. Some scholars, they said, and if I'm not wrong, I might be wrong, that the riwayah, does it have taraktukum alal mahajjah? Does it have the word mahajjah in it? I think that was a mistake that came from the works of Ibn Taymiyyah, that he always used it. And so because of that, many people thought that was in the wording of the hadith. That is if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, if I'm right. That is if I'm right. But it is, تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْبَيْضَى I have left you upon the white. I have left you upon white. لَيْلُهَا It's night. It's like it's day. Meaning, in other words, there's no night. It's all, so white that it's all day. That's the way I've left you. So it's white. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that. And this is what the author means. وَسُنَّةِ الْغَرَّائِ غَرَّائِ وَالْقُرْآنِ and the Qur'an. The Qur'an is also what? But the question is arises here is, why did the author connect the Sunnah to the Qur'an? Why did he do that? When it's clear that the Qur'an is the first source of revelation or first source of evidence. We say, Because that happened, the, it doesn't show that because the wow in itself doesn't show tartib. Are you with me brothers? The wow in the Arabic language only shows mughayra, that these two things are different. But it doesn't show tartib ولا تعقيب. The wow never shows Sequence. The fat does, but the wow doesn't. The wow doesn't. So just because he has done, he used the word the wow here, it doesn't mean that the Quran uh, is a tabi'un for the sunnah. No way, form, or shape is it. Rather, the sunnah comes after the Quran. And the sunnah is after the Quran. Naam. So the author here, when he says Wal Quran, he means the Quran is also Al Gharra, it's also clear. The Quran is also white and it's clear. There is no taint in it. You know why? Because the Prophet's job was to clarify the Quran. And if his Sunnah is clear, so is the Quran. I send the Quran down onto you, Muhammad, so you can clarify it for the people. So the job of the Sunnah was to clarify what is in the Qur'an. And that is what our Prophet did. He clarified the Qur'an by his utterance. He clarified the Qur'an by his actions. And he also clarified the Qur'an by the consent. Which he consented to when the companions had done actions. So his Sunnah was an explanation of the Qur'an. And our mother Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she said, after being asked about the Prophet, that she said, "Kana Quran," his characteristics and his etiquette, Ali Sallallahu was the Quran. In other words, he was a, he was a, he was an example of what you would find in the Quran. The Prophet Ali Sallallahu is what you would find. So if you open the Quran and you looked, you would see what the Prophet Sallallahu or you would know, sorry, what is in the Quran by his actions, Alayhi Sallallahu So that was a very powerful statement of our mother Aisha to say about the Prophet 
alayhi salatu wa salam. We'll conclude there, inshallah ta'ala, for today's class. Bismillah al kareem And we'll carry on uh, tomorrow from the next line, which he says, وَكَمْ لَهُ مِن نِعْمَةٍ عَلَيْنَا وَمِنَّةٍ أَوْصَلَهَا إِلَيْنَا Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.